Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday. It is the Earth Master here, about 12.02 p.m. California time, July 23rd, 2024. Latest activity shows a continued earthquake swarm there on the big island of Hawaii underneath Kilauea Volcano. They have updated the status there from yellow to orange. Uh, also, some activity around the northern end of the Cascadia. We'll get to this here in just a minute. I do want to show some breaking news out of the Yellowstone National Park area where they seen a significant steam eruption uh, earlier today. The last one took place here back in 2009 and was not quite as spectacular, but uh, goodness, <clears throat> that's enough to send the folks there uh, running for cover. I heard some folks there got hit by uh, a couple of those uh, debris rocks or maybe some of the mud out there. Either way, uh, very dangerous out there. Yellowstone, of course, is a super volcano and um, these steam eruptions can take place at any given time again the last one was uh, apparently back in 2009 this video here posted on the social media site x from namas uh, there is his official page if you want to go check it out i'm sure you'll see it out there if you are part of the x community but uh, goodness that's that is significant doesn't mean Yellowstone's about ready to blow. It just means that, uh, you know, these steam pockets build up for quite a while. You get enough uh, heat underground and enough water, and uh, that's what happens there. You get those um, beautiful but scary steam explosions. All right, so right now, Kilauea Volcano on the Big Island of Hawaii has been revised from its previous color code, uh, which was in advisory to a watch and also from yellow to orange, indicating some uptick and potential here of an eruption. I'm really surprised it didn't kick up overnight, but uh, it's still holding on there. There was a pretty significant earthquake event about three o'clock the morning, uh, three o'clock in the morning there as well. We'll check that out here in a second. Latest statement shows Kilauea volcano is not erupting. Uh, increased earthquake activity and ground deformation around the upper east rift zone began about 3:30 a.m. Hawaii time, indicating the likely movement here of magma in the subsurface below. So they raised the uh, alert there. Uh, the earthquake activity is centered near the uh, crater area. I'm not for sure how to pronounce that, so I'm going to avoid that. Uh, the situation is rapidly evolving, and at this time, it is not possible to say with certainty if this activity will lead to an eruption or not. Let's. Uh, check out these previous eruptions the area of interest is right about here where they stated the uh, elevated activity is occurring now it's very close to the July 1974 uh, lava flow but uh, could, I'm and I've been saying the entire time here we could see it within this area I don't think we're gonna see an eruption back up at the uh, the uh, summit area the lava lake area where all this earthquake activity is occurring is obviously uh, an indicator where it could potentially break through. Here's the latest map here on in the terms of earthquake activity. The latest one of 3.1 coming in here just uh, moments ago. I think we still got that on the seismograph station there. I believe that was a three-pointer. Looks like a couple other smaller quakes in there as well following that uh, three-pointer. Um, and concentrated here specifically around that little crater area. Uh, webcams do not show any Bring back the webcam here. Any significant changes there at the surface? Obviously, we haven't, we don't have any fissure events taking place. One would never know, right? That there's a, a danger lurking below here in terms of the next eruption. Beautiful clear sky out there on the Big Island. We'll continue to watch that because things are getting quite uh, interesting here. Look at this stair-stepping tilt meter event here. We're we're seeing the ground rise quite rapidly there on this latest tilt meter. Uh, specifically in this area. So there is magma, uh, if not moving further from the summit off into this area to where we could see that eruption take place. The overall deformation data there across the upper east rift zone and the summit area shows a little bit of a decline, but I believe that's firmly because the magma is moving a little bit further to the southeast where we're currently seeing our earthquake activity event take place. There's a couple large inflated events last night when we seen that elevated earthquake activity. And it did go up and basically stay stationary there, there for a little bit overnight. But then things moved off. 
and uh, went kind of away from the summer summit down to the area of interest right now. So we lost a little bit of volume of magma in this area, but on that tilt meter, uh, it shows further elevated activity here, uh, indicating the magma movement and, of course, the earthquake activity that accompanies the, um, the, the magma. So we'll continue to watch that. Let me see what we got here for the seismograph stations. I wanted to show you guys here real quick. <clears throat> All right. So this one that we seen last night here about 3 o'clock in the morning local time there in Hawaii is very similar to the event that we seen um, yesterday, late afternoon time period. A lot of increasing earthquake activity. I mean, there's hundreds of earthquakes here on this seismograph station that you can see. Uh, and that was about 3 o'clock this morning. Since then, you know, we're still rocking and rolling. The earthquakes are... Uh, little bit more scattered out there's a three-pointer that just came in uh, but I don't think we're done yet it's it's an evolving process here on to uh, uh, underneath the area of the Kilauea volcano evolving it could potentially well this depth here is about it shows 1.7 miles that's 0.9 a lot of these are just below the surface here Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards an eruption out here in this area specifically, and I've been calling that for quite a while, ever since the last eruption out there on the southwest rift zone. I don't see it coming up here. There's really no signs of migration up at the Lava Lake area. There was a little bit up here right around the rim, but uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're focused here on this area right now in terms of uh, where we could see the ne next fissure, eruptive fissure event take place, and it might just be a dandy. We'll have to watch that. Another seismograph station over here to the west a little bit. Picking up uh, that earthquake activity from yesterday. Pretty significant uh, earthquake multitude counts there. And then also early this morning, uh, that count. And um, we'll continue to watch it. Right now, the volcano, let me refresh that there because they still have this on the yellow. I'm not for sure why. See that? Looks like they forgot to change it on this page. But uh, if you go to the uh, official volcano site here, uh, it's sitting as an... Did they drop it already? <laughs> These guys playing games or what? They That's weird. They may have just changed it back here. It wasn't orange. I mean, I read it, right? You guys read the uh, statement, see orange and watch. Maybe they just forgot to change the, uh, the little triangle out there, but it's still sitting at a uh, orange and watch level. So, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. I do have a seismograph station there, Hot Caves, Hawaii area, picking up the earthquake activity. That's going to be that three-pointer that just came in moments ago. So, a lot going on underneath the oceanic crust. A lot going on underneath the crust here around Yellowstone. A lot going on here um, at the Cascadia subduction zone as well. You know, we had that earthquake event here a week or so ago, a couple weeks ago, where we've seen a lot of fours and fives stirring up out here at the northern end of the Cascadia. We did have one more 4.5. This one, though, right smack dab on the Cascadia subduction zone, the northern end, uh, 4.5 coming in. A couple hours ago here, just around the Queen Charlotte Sound, the extreme northern end, uh, yesterday we didn't see any tremor events out here. This is from yesterday, so no tremor count. I don't know if they just didn't report it or maybe there wasn't any. I just find it odd to just completely stop like that. But uh, either way, we do have some earthquake activity up there. This morning, keep an eye on the Pacific Plate. That includes California. We've got a lot going on here inland as well, away from the plate boundary. These weak crustal areas out here, better known as oil fields and fracking operations and wastewater disposal facilities, are uh, getting hammered with a lot of earthquake activity here recently, overnight in Texas. Of course, we had that 4.9 just outside of Snyder, Texas, was just out here a couple times earlier this year. And uh, I bought a beautiful wind chime out there for uh, Missy Mimi's, a, a huge one. Uh, it makes a lot of noise in the wind, but I love it. We're uh, big-time wind, wind chime lovers. Um, 
Now, 4.4. Let's see here. Did they downgrade that earthquake? No, they didn't. That was just a secondary earthquake that came in moments following that 4.9, which was felt over a broad area out here of western Texas, as you can see here on the map, even over around the Dallas area. A pretty decent earthquake. Let me show you guys real quick what uh, the Yellowstone seismograph station looked like when that four-pointer came in, 4.9. There it is from yesterday. Beautiful long-duration event on the seismograph stations. That is not a local seismic activity. That is not magma moving underneath the ground. But that is, in fact, that 4.9 that stirred up there in the Texas area yesterday. So... Following this 4.9, obviously, there's quite a bit of aftershock activity. We could see some further events. We could see some larger events uh, here across any of this area of Texas, Oklahoma, and maybe even New Mexico. There's quite a few oil fields out here as well. But the main areas right now getting hit is going to be around Snyder, Texas, and also back over here around the, um, the Pecos, Texas area. Let me pull up the satellite view here and show you guys. There's quite a few... Um, older these look like older wastewater injection facilities and fracking operations this specific earthquake swarm here is occurring right next to a solar farm uh, surprisingly but uh, there's a wastewater pond right here with some tanks on it you have to look a little closely but there's a whole process involved in getting rid of that wastewater they inject it well below the surface and you know there's there's been uh, statistics there how earthquakes have increased dra dramatically ever since the oil boom out here. Um, so, you know, it's not just making up false statements. There's definitely a relationship between what goes on out here in the operations and earthquake activity. Look at this earthquake activity in the last hour. Fracking pond right here. Beautiful blue one right there. Those are not swimming pools for the hardworking oil fields to go swimming in after a long day's work. That's not what they're for. Trust me. You don't want to go swimming in those. Uh... And there's another one right here. So it's and if you go over here to this part of Texas near Snyder, I was uh, again I was just out here. This area is littered with oil fields galore, wastewater ponds. Those are wastewater ponds, holding tanks right there. There's even if you go through these little smaller towns out here in Texas, there's people that have these oil um, drilling equipment in their front or backyard <laughs> in the city. It's crazy. But hey, that's, you know, it's like liquid gold out there, right? Liquid gold. But also at the same time, you got earthquake activity to deal with, and that will continue into the future. And some of those can get big. That's not the biggest one Texas has seen there. They've seen an upper five-pointer or so uh, a short time back, a couple years maybe. Maybe it was a year ago. I can't remember exactly. Either way, Oklahoma looks like they're getting hit as well out here. We'll keep an eye on the new Madrid seismic zone. Obviously increasing pressure out here. Uh, could be a good indicator here to watch the New Madrid seismic zone and also the eastern portion of the country as well due to that migrational pressure transfer that's going on out here across the North American plate. We haven't really seen anything significant here across Southern California for now. handful of smaller quakes. Um, did not mean to do that. I want to check out the 2.5 map and above. It looks like there was a, a 2.6 from last night down here south of the border. Uh, aside from that, not a whole lot above 2.5. Doesn't mean we're not going to see some elevated activity, though. So keep an eye on California. Even though it's quiet for now, we still got the stress that's going on out here against the plates. Uh, back at Yellowstone real quick. Aside from that signature there from that 4.9 in Texas, I'm really not seeing any significant earthquake activity uh, take place or any type of smaller quake activity either. Uh, I was trying to find that seismic signature where the uh, that little eruption happened this morning, that um, steam eruption. I don't want to say it's a Yellowstone eruption. It's a it's a uh, a steam geyser steam eruption. Um, if Yellowstone blows, then that's obviously a uh, a different story. There's no sign of that right now, folks. Just it's going down. Let me show you guys real quick while I'm out here talking about Yellowstone. I don't want to get fears lighted up out here. These uh, eruptions can come and go, and it also depends on, you know, the heated areas below the surface and how much groundwater is out here. But if you look at the overall trend out here of the GPS statements or GPS uh, positions, you can see 
that uh, instead of going up like we were here a few years ago, right? This is MM vertical displacement. We've leveled off, if, it, if anything, gone down. So there's not a whole lot of inflation going on there across the Yellowstone area. If we were continuing to go up and up and up uh, around this area, then yeah, I'd be like, okay, we got to watch that. This one here, this is a little specific area. Shows a little bit of vertical displacement. That does include 2024, and that is station uh, 714. see here I want to see exactly where that's at because that does look like it's rising up a little bit there this one's not really worthy of it uh, around the lake I know this area has definitely dropped 2024 that's a little weird I never noticed that um, vertical inflation going on here across one of these seismograph stations I'll have to find that a little bit later here and see which one it was yeah, this is one of the ones that are showing a downturn. It varies, right? And it also varies with uh, the seasons. Uh, in the summertime here, after the snow, well, the springtime, after all the snow melt and whatnot, all that water gets absorbed into the surface below and does act as a sponge. Yellowstone's, uh, their scientists in charge up there put out an article recently how the seasonal deflation and inflation events are associated with the water intake there of the ground the snow melt and whatnot so it makes sense right you put moisture in the ground it's going to swell up and show as a uh, inflated type of event but that one station there and this one's pretty decent here this is in the caldera area of yellowstone shows a huge downturn over the past few years so maybe certain areas might show a little bit we'll check on that a little bit uh later tonight or another update i don't want to spend too much time on that because we could look at those charts for hours and i don't want to do that but as far as earthquake activity goes right now there's not a whole lot going on there um 3.0 in idaho from yesterday i've got a little earthquake up here in washington as well just after midnight near longview All right, let's take a look at the rest of the world. I know we got, you know, Hawaii and uh, a lot going on inland on the North American plate. The Cascadia subduction zone, the northern end, is uh, something to watch. And 3.2 up here in the Gulf of Alaska, one of the latest quakes here. Getting a little bit of swarming over here across the Aleutian Trench. This is just uh, south of the Cook Inlet area and into the region somewhat deep. At least one of those quakes there, 24 kilometers deep the latest one for a 3.1 so overall definitely looks like we're wanting to move out here there's a lot going on underneath this area though folks crazy uh, let me look at the uh <coughs> excuse me the global view here quite a bit of earthquake activity there at uh hawaii 4.9 very shallow earthquake there around the tonga area nothing showing up across new zealand for now uh, we filled in a little bit here around Papua new guinea and the solomon islands with a couple fours uh, but it looks as though right now uh, a lot of activity oh this is clustering typical clustering here across taiwan southward where we're seeing some fours and threes out there really not showing up here on the usgs map but they are guaranteed right about in that same area uh, not a whole lot across the western areas of the Pacific Plate. That includes Japan. Got one super deep earthquake, though, up here. Uh, well, wait a minute here. What do we got? 4.6. That's from yesterday. I got to raise. I got to lower this again. Whenever we have some huge swarms coming in, I have to adjust the time frame here to include the last 24 hours. So right there that should be the last 24 hours because this 4.6 there in japan was uh from yesterday but not quite past the threshold of the 24 hour mark see 1627 so that's in a couple hours a few hours so now that we're good uh, as long as the swarm doesn't go down because if it does then it will mess up the whole count on the globe again but uh, for now we got the last 24 hours including that huge swarm there in uh, hawaii Deep earthquake into the Kurokamachaka 
That's going to be a 390 kilometer, 4.6. Keep an eye on this area. You know, I've been saying it a lot, and each day that goes by, I feel we're getting closer to a, a pretty large event out here. It's very capable of producing a mega quake, mega quake. And um, we've gotten a lot of deep activity here with really nothing in terms of any surface adjustment or locked areas uh, seen release of pressure. It's just building up and building up, all, all thanks to all these uh, deep earthquakes we've seen here. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else we got? Take a look here across the area. 4.2 out around the, uh, that's going to be the Caspian Sea up here, right? Somewhere in this area. Nothing showing up there on the USGS map. Look at a 4.2 there. Fairly recent. Um, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Ison does have a 2.9. So let's go see what's going on up in Ison. I haven't, haven't really checked that uh, recently. But it is an area that's uh, been uh, inflating out here in terms of the uh, magma recharging underneath the surface in the Savart Singi area of Grindavik, northeast of Grindavik, I should say. A couple smaller earthquakes there today. Really nothing of any major interest. Let's go check out the, uh, the run times here real quick as far as inflation charts. And... Yeah, here's the uh, vertical displacement going up and up and up. I think we're above the previous level, matching it, if not a little bit above that previous level seen prior to our last eruption there back at the end of May. So this is vertical uplift. That's uh, it's matching it. So we got a decent amount of volume of magma b below the surface. <clears throat> Man, I hope I'm not catching what Missy Mimi's have has. Uh, she's been sick here for a couple days. Got that upper chest congestion and I think it's a head cold or something or got a little fever as well. So I'm hoping not. I've been trying to stock up on some vitamin C. Um, let's check out the... Let's see if they got a statement here from the Icelandic Med Office. Uh, yeah, this one was put out today, 723. Uh, magma accumulation under Savart Singhi stable if you look at the last few weeks hmm stable steady as the uh, inflation goes uh, wording's off a little bit here likelihood of a new e magma flow and even eruption in the next two to three weeks updated scenarios released alongside updated hazards uh, so now we got 13 to 19 million cubic meters of magma uh, underneath this area or close to it that's that's the the amount needed uh, for a new magma flow and even an eruption. I'm trying to read there. The, the, ling the translation here is a little off from Icelandic. Uh, but right now they're thinking that uh, there's about 16 million cubic meters um, will be here in the next coming days, next couple days or so. Uh, there's the chart. Obviously our most recent event there. Uh, that took place back in um, end of May. So now we've lowered a little bit, but look at that coming right back up here. We're uh, actually we're ahead of some previous eruption uh, levels. So it's just a matter of time. Again, watch for earthquake activity. Here's another map showing the uh, the inflation and the accumulation here of magma underneath the region, the star indicating the eruption time. So obviously going up and up and up means that we're recharging and then when we get to a certain point we get the star leading to an eruption. So just uh, yeah, a matter of time here. Here's the current risk level where they believe some activity may take place. That could include uh, eruptive fissure events and whatnot here in the red area. That includes look like down around the uh, Grindavik area as well. So. We'll keep an eye on that and uh, see uh, what changes out here. There's definitely a lot going on underneath the surface, right? Goodness. But I think we'll see Hawaii kick up here soon. I'll, I'll be surprised if we don't get this today. I was expecting to uh, hear about it early this morning when I woke up and see that the eruption had 
broken through here and took place outside of this area or within this area I should say but no just got a lot of earthquake activity a lot of uh, a little bit of magma movement the other uh, possible scenario is that we see maybe um, a an intrusion event further down here across the east rift zone the lower east rift zone if it doesn't uh, significantly uh, break through this area here so we we'll just got to watch it Again, I got a seismograph station there, Hot Caves, that will pick up some of the earthquakes. Not picking up all of them, but it does pick up some of the twos and threes out there. And, of course, anything larger that takes place out there in that area. <clears throat> all right, let's check out space weather. There was a uh, pretty significant uh, event on the far side of the sun, uh, which they believe was a uh, possibly an X-flare. Uh, was directed away from the planet uh, but we did get a proton event here it looks like I do see that showing up on the global delayer map mainly across the northern polar regions here that's just a solar radiation storm from the charged particles that was shot off from that significant large flare um, even though it wasn't earth directed we still get those charged protons that slam into the ionosphere uh, at a fast rate of speed and you get that a uh, little bit of a blackout there radio blackout up across the polar regions may again mainly on the northern side not going to be affecting us here uh, outside of that region we did have a i think that's a little m flare right here from earlier off of 3764 so i believe that yeah this far side western edge or uh, eastern edge of the sun is where that M flare came from doesn't look uh all that dynamic at least from this view but we'll keep an eye on it uh we are expecting a potential g2 class storm here as noted on the graph so let's see what we got here all right we're gonna see some auroras it better happen uh better happen tonight right is it tonight let's see here 06 to 0900 on the 24th so current UTC time is 723 July 23rd 1930 so this may be a, a tonight event late night maybe early tomorrow morning event So we'll get out there tonight. This is tonight's uh, forecast there from the Space Weather Prediction Center. If you're in this area and uh, you're a Aurora watcher like me, you might want to get out there see what you can see. I don't think it's going to be a spectacular event, but they are forecasting up to a G2 class storm here. KP index of 6. Uh, but yeah, we do have some 5 prior to that and afterwards. So yeah, definitely a, t a night nighttime event here tonight. If you got clear skies and you don't have a... You know, overcast conditions, you should be able to see it here within the view line. We'll check back on that, though, a little bit later on this evening. See if uh, anything has changed. Here's tomorrow night's not uh, as active, obviously. Uh, flare threat. 15% chance X flare. There's a proton event. That's going to stir up probably for a little bit. 60% uh, chance for an M flare. C flare around 99% chance or so. And uh, we'll keep an eye on a couple of these sunspots that are currently on the Earth-facing side of the sun. Yeah, that's a beautiful, uh, beautiful explosion there. That was off, way off on the western limb. But uh, not headed towards Earth. I was directed away from Earth. Had that been uh, directed at Earth, as far as that CME activity goes, we'd be talking about something above a G2 class storm. All right, uh, Storm Prediction Center, in terms of severe weather out here, not a whole lot over the next couple days, just general thunderstorm activity out here. Maybe a little marginal risk for, well, it looks like maybe a little bit of wind and some hail. Really no tornado threats out there at all. And a look at the uh, hurricane potentials out here we do have disturbance two and uh, disturbance one uh they got 
this one here looks like a more likelihood of seeing some type of tropical development uh, in the next 48 hours. Uh, really nothing of concern yet. They're heading away from land. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, nothing expected out here in the next 48 hours, which is good news. Seismograph stations, a little bit of activity there in the hot caves of Hawaii. Yellowstone, a little spike there as well. We'll keep an eye on the events taking place. Quite the active uh, past couple days out here with Hawaii and whatnot. Goodness. Well, watch this, folks. See what happens today. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening, unless something major happens. Then we'll, of course, jump back on in here. Have a good day.